Uh, I didn't write these questions, so some of them I have to read verbatim. Hit me. So, uh, what were your thoughts and reactions when you were first offered The Last Jedi? Uh, I was, I mean, if any Star Wars fan out there imagines what their reaction would be if they were asked to do direct the next one, that's how I felt. It was out of, it was, it felt like it came out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming. It's so unexpected. And I felt like, uh, yeah, I felt like a, a planet blew up in my head. <laughs> Uh, as a writer, how did you approach uh, crafting the story, and what were the elements that were most important for you to mm. put in? Well, I know, this is the second chapter after The Force Awakens, so Force Awakens created these amazing, vibrant new characters. It was the job of this movie then to pick them up and, and really kind of test their mettle, put them through their paces. So I tried to just kind of figure out, really get inside the head of each of the characters and figure out, okay, where did they go next? And that ended up leading to some really unexpected places. And then Luke Skywalker is the other big ingredient in this movie. I knew we had to figure out what's the deal with Luke. Um, it's just, with the uh, Force Awakens yeah. introducing new cast members, you, you now in this film have three different you know, yeah. iterations of cast members from the original yeah. trilogy to the ones introduced in Force Awakens, and there's new. Tell us about the experience of yeah. working with that multiple multi-level cast. It's interesting how there's always a uh, there's always kind of a correlation between what's happening on screen and what's happening in real life. So to be on set and to have Mark and Carrie, who obviously go all the way at the beginning with these films, and then to have you know Daisy and Adam and John and uh, Oscar and everyone who was in The Force Awakens, and then to have Kelly Marie Tran and Laura Dern and Benicio del Toro, who this is their first Star Wars outing. Um, and I was with them. I was the new kid. So um, to have that multi-layered kind of generational thing, I, I, I don't know. It felt right. And uh, I've heard that sets are more massive yeah. uh, in this production, and it obviously takes a balance between special effects and the practical, detailed, amazing sets that are, you're working with. How, how does, does that balance yeah. come about, and how do you have to work with that? Yeah, we had a, a huge amount of practical sets for this film, and part of the lived-in feel of Star Wars is something we really wanted to capture. Um, at the same time, uh, the other part of Star Wars is constantly pushing the envelope in terms of cutting in special effects. So the handoff between the practical and what ILM brings to the table visually, um, where those two meet, has always been kind of where these movies live. And the uh, final question is, what do you expect audiences will take away when they walk out of the theater? I hope audiences come out of the theater wanting to run into their backyard, grab their Star Wars toys, and start flying spaceships around. I hope it just feels like a great Star Wars movie, a fun Star Wars movie that uh, takes you back to being 10 years old again. Hey, Vale here. Now, hundreds of movies come out every year, but very few are hits. Here are America's top five highest grossing movies, adjusted for inflation, according to box office Mojo. Okay, number one, Gone with the Wind. Released in 1939, is one of the world's first genuine blockbusters, with a grand total of 1,786,074,500 dollars. Number two, Star Wars from 1977, the George Lucas space opera that launched a thousand action figures and almost as many sequels and prequels, still reigns supreme in the Star Wars universe, with a total take of 1,574,577,200 dollars. Number three, The Sound of Music from 1965, The Hills Are Alive, with the sound of 1,258,951,900 dollars in domestic ticket sales. Number four, E.T. The Extraterrestrial. The biggest movies of 1982 is also the fourth biggest movies of all time, with a grand total of 1,253,992,300 dollars. Number five, Titanic from 1997. James Cameron's award-winning film took in 1,197,594,300 dollars during its theatrical run. So, do you think that it's valid that these films made that much money? Let me know in the comments below. See ya.